Hey guys, it's Chris and uh, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be unboxing and checking out the all new DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now it's technically not new and actually came out about three months ago, but I did just receive it after ordering it about a month and a half ago. Now I've been a big fan of DJI for some time now and I've got lots of their different products. Now what I like about this Mini 3 Pro is that it still maintains its mini and portable size at around 249 grams, but it's also got some nice new upgrades from the previous versions. Now I did have the previous Mini 2 version of this, but due to some unfortunate circumstances, I actually did end up losing that one on a trip in Europe, which really bummed me out. So I'm super excited that I now have the DJI Mini 3 Pro in hand. Now because this drone is under 249 grams, you do not need to register this with the FAA, which is always great when you're dealing with drones. Anyways, stay tuned and we'll unbox this and take it out and play around with it to see how good this thing is. Okay, so this is the DJI Mini 3 Pro that just came out a couple months ago and I'm again super excited that I do have this in hand. And again at 249 grams, you do not need to register this with the FAA, so that's always a positive thing. Now this thing does maintain the mini and portable size that the previous versions had, but there are a lot more features in it. And what I also like is that I got the version that comes with the nice new controller, which should make things a lot easier as well to control and to fly this drone. Now in addition to that, I did get this DJI Mini 3 Pro Fly More Kit Plus, which does come with an extra carrying case, a dual battery charger, and additional batteries, as well as some additional blades, cables, and other accessories. So this is something that I thought would be a good buy as well. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what this thing comes with. So we'll start with this DJI Mini 3 Pro box because I'm excited to get the drone out to see what it's all about. Okay, and there is this single tab to remove to open the box. Okay, so look at this little drone. Comes in a vacuum sealed nice little static proof bag. And it's super lightweight, and I love this drone just because of how small it is. Now just like the previous versions, this is super lightweight and comes in at about 249 grams, which makes it super small and super portable, especially when it's all folded up like this. So as you can see, it's got the propellers folded in right now. It's got a couple of sensors on the front, the bottom, uh, all around so that it doesn't crash into things. So it's also got these on the back as well. The camera itself is hidden under the shell uh, right there, the protective shell, which is easily removable. Um, and of course has a bunch of little stickers on it, so let's go ahead and pull these things off. Okay, so that is the drone and we'll look at that a little later. Okay, so like the previous versions, this is super lightweight and comes in at about 249 grams. Uh, so as you can see, this does have the camera in the front as well as a bunch of sensors all around. Uh, it's got this power button at the back which allows you to take out the battery which is where this thing is stored. So just like the previous versions this drone does unfold and all you have to do is you know take out the propellers, bend out the legs, turn them out and you've got your drone. Now the battery on this drone which is easily removable by pressing these two tabs on the sides and simply pulling out the battery should also have a longer battery life. Now as far as the drone itself, compared to the previous versions, this thing also has additional intelligent features, long video transmission ranges, and a fully upgraded imaging and sensing system. This thing does support 4K HDR and it can take photos at up to 48 megapixels. Now the sensors on this drone, which I think there are three sets, two on the front, two on the back, and two on the bottom, does allow this thing to have three directional active optical sensing, which for me is definitely super useful because I do tend to crash these things into objects. And to make that even better, it's also got an upgraded pilot assistance system which makes flying this thing and piloting this thing a lot easier. So as you can see, unfolded, this thing does have a pretty nice wingspan and I do like the look of this drone as well as how light it actually does feel. So, you know, I'm super excited to use this thing and see how well this thing works. Okay, so what I'm super excited about also is this new controller. 
Now previously, I had to connect the controller or whatever extra controller I bought to my phone. So with this one having a built-in LCD, it kind of takes away the need for having to have your smartphone to connect this thing to. And because this is the newly designed uh, controller, it does have better range and control capabilities as well as the pilot assist, which is always super helpful and makes flying these drones a lot easier. As you can see, the controller is super sleek and there is a pretty good sized LCD on the front so that you can get a pretty clear image of what you're looking at when you're piloting the drone. Joystick holder on the bottom, which makes me a little bit nervous just because, you know, there is the potential that these can fall out and get lost. Uh, so that does make it a little bit nerve-wracking for me. However, the good thing is they do seem to fit very snug in this little holder and you know as long as you're not prying at them they probably won't fall out but you know I wish there was a little cover that you can close to make sure you lock it in place so that there's that additional security that these don't fall out you know it kind of re reminds me of the issue with airpods um, and people just losing single airpods okay so uh, you simply just take these little joysticks and screw them into the controller and I gotta say, these joysticks are a metal-like material, so super durable feeling. And then it just feels very smooth. And because it does have these little grips built into the joysticks themselves, flying should be pretty easy. Okay, so on the top there is this camera button to snap a picture, and then there's also the record button, as well as these turn knobs. And then on the back there are a couple of triggers, C1 and C2, which I guess are programmable but also have their own features. You've got your micro SD slot on the controller itself so that you can record on the controller as well as a USB-C port, actually two USB-C ports. Uh, one if you want to connect your phone so that you, other people can see what you're seeing on uh, your a connected uh, smartphone. Okay, other than that, it's got this nice grippy feel to the controller so that you know you're not going to drop this or lose this um, and it just won't slip out of your hand. Um, so. Pretty nice controller, pretty nice sized, and I think perfect fit for most people who want to fly the drone using this controller. Okay, uh, in addition to that, we've also got some accessories, I assume. Okay, so you got one USB-C charging cable, additional propeller blades, and a little screwdriver kit for uh, removing and replacing the propellers themselves. Okay, so that is all we've got there, aside from your documentation, which I typically don't ever read. Okay, so in addition to that, we did buy this Fly More Kit Plus, which you know I always enjoy buying just because of the additional accessories that come with it. So with this, let's see, with this nice little waterproof, good quality carrying case uh, that should be able to fit everything you see here. And with this, we've also got another USB-C to USB-A charging cable, uh, the additional propellers, which you can never have too many of, especially if you're like me, and crash these drones into all kinds of objects. Uh, you also get the looks like the charger which is got some weight to it and I think that's just because it's probably got the batteries plugged into it so yep you got two additional batteries that do come with it and these do feel a little heavier than the battery that comes in the drone itself uh, so I guess these are higher capacity batteries for longer flight times but you can charge up to three batteries at once which is always nice it fits in only one way um, so that is something that's definitely nice about this thing. Okay, so again some instruction manuals which don't care too much about. But the good thing is it's compartmentalized so you can separate all your devices and components. So battery of course goes here. Uh, drone when you fold it up. Can go in here as well. And I almost lost that. So these are so small that I'm a little nervous that you know these are easily lose you can easily lose these, so I'm not going to unscrew these too often unless I'm transporting them. But controller itself can go in here as well. 
And these compartments, of course, are customizable. Accessories. Anyways, as you can see, everything fits into this carrying case just perfectly and has room to spare if you've got some additional accessories that you want to package in this. Anyways, now that everything is unboxed and packaged nicely, let's talk quickly about the specs before we take this thing out to test it out. Okay, so with the included battery with the drone, you can get up to 34 minutes of flight time. But if you've got the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus, which happened to have two included with the Fly More kit, each of these has a boosted flight time of up to 47 minutes, which is great if you need that extra time. Hence the additional weight to these batteries compared to the one that comes with the drone. Now, additionally, if you look at the two batteries that are included with the Fly More kit, one is labeled ultra light uh, for 249 grams. So this does keep the weight of the drone at 249 grams. Now with the heavier battery, this does add some additional flight time, but you may have to register this with the FAA because it may bring the drone above the 249 gram limit. So you might want to check that out just to make sure you, know, you aren't breaking any guidelines or rules. Now I do love how these batteries do just snap in place uh, when they do plug into the charger itself and the fact that you know you can charge all three batteries at once. So there is a plug on this for USB out as well as USB-C in, the power button as well as little LEDs that indicate how charged the batteries are. Uh, so that's always pretty nice. This thing is super durable and it feels super nice and I just like how solid it feels plus the fact of course that it can charge three batteries at once. Now going back to the drone, the drone itself can transmit up to 12 kilometers, which is super far compared to previous drones. And in addition to the longer battery life, it's just insane for this new drone. Now from a feature perspective, this drone has intelligent shooting features such as focus track, time lapse, and even vertical shooting, which means that you can shoot content for social media apps such as TikTok and Instagram, which is something new for this drone. So that's something that's pretty cool. Now it does have some additional features and I'm going to play around with those when we do take this thing out to test it out. Now what's interesting is that this controller is actually heavier than the drone itself. So that just tells you how lightweight it is. Now what that also means is that flight times can vary depending on the weather conditions. So for example, if it's super windy outside, which it has been lately aside from the heat, this drone is going to need to spend additional power just to compensate for that extra wind. So Flight times for all the different batteries could vary depending on different weather conditions and different situations. Uh, but it is cool to know that this thing is super light and lighter than the controller itself, uh, which says a lot for the controller because that means it is a super good quality controller um, and also from an efficiency standpoint for the drone because it is lightweight. Okay, so to give you a better relative understanding of the size of this drone, now I don't have the previous drone because again, there was an incident where I ended up losing that drone. I am gonna compare it to one of the other drones that I have. So here in my hand, I do have the DJI Spark that I had previously. So this is the Spark. And comparatively from a size perspective, you can see it's about the same with the Spark having kind of a wider uh, wingspan when it is folded up. Now when this thing is open, this of course will have a wider wingspan and be a little bit larger. But from a size perspective, as you can see, the body is about the same size or just a little bit bigger than the Spark itself. Uh, so as you can see, and I guess just for a frame of reference, the Spark is actually heavier as well than this drone, even with the battery installed, I believe. So let's go ahead and test that out. So this is the battery that came with the drone. Okay, so I'm gonna... And yes, the Spark is actually heavier than the DJI 3 Pro. This is a bit of a comparison, you know, from one of the older drones to the newer drones. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's go ahead and take this all new DJI Mini 3 Pro out to somewhere safe and spacious to test it out. And the reason why I say that is one, because this is still new and I did spend some money on this and because I am still not that great at flying these drones, but want to make sure that I'm not going to crash this thing into things or lose it out in the open water. Um, which I mean is covered because I did buy that extended warranty, but you know, I want to make sure that 
I get to keep this thing a little bit longer before I again lose it like the previous drone that I had. Okay guys, we are now out here in the middle of an open area where we can do our maiden flight of the new DJI Mini 3 Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the legs. We'll stick in this extended battery so we can get the most out of our flight time. I've also installed a 250 gig SD card uh, in this drone. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down and test flight this thing and see how well this thing works and how well the video is. Okay, we'll go ahead and set this thing up by screwing in the joysticks and apologize for all the ambient noise but we are near a major road so let's go ahead and power this controller on okay we'll go through the setup so we're gonna have to go through and choose english agree to the terms of service united states there's no wi-fi currently Okay, so we have to activate this first, so we will need Wi-Fi. Okay, set the time zone. Then you have to log into your account, your DJI account. Okay, so some of the signals, so solid red is aircraft is not connected. Solid green is aircraft is connected. Solid ye yellow is firmware update failed. So we're just going through standard setup, and then we'll go to DJI Fly. Okay, so we have to connect the aircraft, so let's power this thing on. So we'll press and hold the power button. Okay, so the drone is now on. Now we'll just place this out here. Okay, so as you can see, the drone is already connected. It's just restart activating and then restarting the drone. Probably should have done all this before I came out here. Okay, so it looks like there's a firmware update for the drone as well. Okay, let's go fly. Uh, I guess we have to up update the firmware first, which is going to take a little while. So as you can see, it's updating the firmware. And we'll just come back once the firmware is updated. Okay guys, so I am here in a parking lot near the Lower Bull Creek Greenbelt area. And what's nice about that is that it's near the Pennybacker Bridge, which overlooks this amazing lake and stream that people like to visit. So there's not too many people out here today, uh, but there are a lot of people out near the lake area. So I'm gonna set up the drone here and we are gonna test out this DJI Mini 3 Pro to see how well it works. So what I'm going to do first is instead of using the battery that came with the drone, I'm going to use one of the Fly More batteries so I have longer flight time. We're just going to plug that into the drone itself and then we'll set up the drone and we'll take flight and see what we can capture using the drone footage. Okay, so now that the battery is installed, I'm going to press twice and hold to activate the drone itself. I'll just put that. Then I'm going to press twice on the controller to activate the controller. Now one thing you're going to want to do is you make sure you need to activate the drone and the controller before actually flying. Now what I did previously is I tried to film right out of the box and I had to go through all the setup and I also had to activate these which wasn't very fast over uh, my cellular connection. So make sure you do do that before you take this thing out to fly. But now that it's activated I'm just going to take the thumbsticks off the bottom and connect them. Please check it on the map. So what I'm going to do is now take the thumbsticks and I'm going to screw them into the top. And as you can see, or not see, because it's pretty bright out here, is that the footage and the video on the controller itself is pretty clear. It's a super clear image actually. So about the drone, I did add an additional 250 gig SD card to it so that I'd have more space for footage. And what's good about the controller is you can also have and add an SD card to it as well so that you can also record footage directly to the controller itself. Now today I did not do that, but that's a good thing to have is that you can have backup footage or if you run out of space on the drone itself, you can still record the controller. So that is definitely not a bad thing is having that redundancy. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take off with the drone. You have to press and hold. And I gotta say, 
And I gotta say that this drone is a lot quieter than the previous version, which is pretty nice. So I'm still fairly a newbie when it comes to controlling a drone, but as you can see, it's pretty easy to control even for someone who's new. And that is the Pennybacker Bridge right there that overlooks the lake. And right now I have it in normal mode. So there are three different modes for this controller. There's the there's C and S, and S is the sports mode. So that is the one that's gonna be the fastest and have the most pitch. Okay, so there's me. Now it's nice, especially for amateur pilots like myself, is that they've got this hold button. So if you start to feel like you're losing control of the drone, you can just press and hold it and it'll stop the drone in its place and it'll just hover so that it will just stand there so that you can regain control of the drone. Now what's nice about this, especially for amateur pilots like myself, is if you're starting to feel like you're gonna lose control or if the drone is about to crash into an object, you can automatically press the H button and it'll stop in its place and center itself and just hold itself in that position so you can regain control of the drone itself. So definitely a nice feature to have. One thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is adjust the control so it's comfortable for you. So right now the drone operates going in the opposite direction that I'm pushing the controller sticks. And for me that usually is confusing, especially when I'm not trying to pay attention. So I'm going to go ahead and change these so it matches the direction that I'm pushing the joystick in because it's a lot easier for me to control that way. Now another thing that's nice about this drone that takes into account the feedback for a lot of people and a lot of use cases, especially for those people who like doing social media and posting Instagram or TikToks or you know just phone footage, is that there is now a portrait mode on this drone as well. So there's a button on the controller itself which you can then press so that you're recording content in portrait mode, which is great, especially so you don't need a tripod and your camera in order to do these. So that's something that's good about this that took into account the feedback of a lot of the users and adds an extra use case for this drone. And then if you lose sight of your drone, you can just press the go home button and it'll return to where it took off and land itself. So always good, especially you know, when you're not paying attention to the drone itself and you lose sight of it and don't know where it is. Now what's also nice about this Mini 3 Pro drone is that it's got active track, but in this case it's called Focus Track and it's version 4.0. Now this is something that previous Mini drones did not have. So this is gonna be the first drone in the DJI Mini series that has active track built into it as well. Now the one thing you have to note is that this Mini 3 Pro does only have rear obstacle avoidance sensors and not lateral obstacle avoidance. So that may affect its tracking purposes. But in my case, you know, I used it a little while, I walked around, I had it track me, and it didn't run into any kind of obstacles or have any kind of issues. So I wanna say that's not really an issue, but just a heads up that that may be a problem when it's doing active track. And what you wanna do in order to activate active track is you wanna slide and create a green box around the target you wanna track and then it'll pull up a little box on the bottom that allows you to do active track, spotlight, or POI. So I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna choose active track is I'm gonna drag and slide on the screen a box around myself, and then I'm gonna choose active track, and then I'm gonna click go, and it'll follow me around. So anywhere I move, the drone will also follow me. And it'll stay at a certain distance that you set it. So as you can see, I'm not doing anything, and it's just following me. So this is definitely a nice feature to have on this drone itself, which is not available on other minis. So a nice improvement. Okay, so I'm gonna send it home to land. I'm gonna make it stop tracking me. Now what's nice about this active track is that it can follow either people or objects. So I could get on my bike and ride around and it would follow me around and record me. Or I can just even get in my car and drive around and have it track the car as well, which is great for that action shot or that moving footage. 
Now what's also nice about this drone is the range. With this controller, you can go up to 12 kilometers, which is definitely nice for a lot more capabilities when it comes to filming footage. Now I didn't really test out the distance and the maximum distance because I for one did not want to lose my drone, especially because it is brand new. Now that's something that I'm going to test over time to see how far I can push this out from a range perspective and just how far I can take this drone. Okay, so from a mode perspective, if I put it into sports mode, it does turn off the obstacle avoidance, which gives you that extra control to kind of maneuver around things. It gives you a lot more give uh, when you're controlling this drone. So it's a lot faster and moves a lot faster as well. So you can definitely notice the speed changes and everything in the drone itself. Um, so it does turn into a sports drone, which is super fast and I almost ran into the wall. So I probably won't be using this very much, just because it's super fast. And I almost hit myself with it. So I'm probably gonna use this normal drone mode a lot more because it's a lot easier to control for me at least. Now what's nice is the drone is super responsive, especially to the controls itself. I don't have to do much to move it around. But you can definitely tell the difference between the different modes for this drone. For example, this is my left and right if I'm using the normal mode. And if I put it on sports mode, this is my left and right. It's a lot faster as you can see. Whoa. Oh. So as you can see, I just crashed it into my car on accident with that sport mode. So I'm definitely not gonna be using that very much. Now I definitely do think this is an upgrade from its predecessors. So if you want something that can shoot pro videos like the larger drones, but is as light and small as the minis previously, then I definitely recommend this drone. It's fast, it's lightweight, and the video quality is amazing. It's got features that the previous minis don't have, such as the portrait mode, as well as the active track, which is something that the larger drones have, but the minis don't. So this is absolutely the perfect midpoint and solution for people who want the pro features of the larger drones and the portability and lightness of the smaller mini drones. And at the same time, it's also got a nice controller that has a ton of new advancements and a nice LCD screen on it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please make sure you go ahead and support this channel by smashing that like button. Please also make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon to make sure you get notified when I post new content. Until next time, see ya.